are playing on Death Aura and it's gonna be PVT. Spawning on the bottom right corner, playing with the Cyan Protoss pieces, he is Aztex. And his opponent, playing with the red Terran pieces, playing for uh, playing uh, red Terran pieces, he is Prospect. Alright, let's see what these two have in store for us. Neither of them seems to be blocking the natural entryway over here. And Terran is going... Yeah, there is a good, uh, like, supply depot placement to the barracks. Really straight opener and gateway for Prodas. So, uh, Death Aura, we have had a couple of matches uh, on this map already today. And we have these really valuable high Vespian geysers in the middle of the map on the both sides. And we have the acceleration zones and the destructible rocks guarding uh, the path of any attacking path uh, to the other bases. So the Terran went with a sneaky hidden barracks in the back of the base. But there are two probes attacking the, uh, the SCV, but, uh, but Prospect is fast replying to that and drives the probes away, leaving the SCV unscathed. So there's gonna be a reactor to that barracks. Uh, Protoss is taking very nice cybernetic score and the gas. And the natural is being taken by Protoss. Very good, very good. Re a really stable opener. And he has, well, not exactly hidden, but he had placed the probe on the natural to, show, uh, to see when the Terran would place his natural down. Uh, Terran is a bit flimsy, or like not flimsy, but a really, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, interesting race to play against because if you block the natural, they can build their command center on the back of the base and then float it around. Alright, the SCV is being driven away, there are two marines for the Terran. And there is Adept for the Protoss and the Warp Gate being researched. Uh, oh, and there is Concussive Shells coming for the Terran to two barracks. No factories. Oh, and he gets the probe. And they still are uh, like they are working on the probes and SCVs. Ooh, someone is... The Terran has... Okay, so there is no Reaper harassment. No, and he is likely supply block uh, blocked. Uh, that's gonna hurt, but he's gonna pull all almost all the SCVs into this fight. Oh, we are gonna see something cheeky from the Terran. Well, how is the Protoss gonna respond to that? He has two shield batteries, one pylon. That one pylon is vulnerable uh, vulnerable for this attacking force it can take down that pylon real quick only three adepts there is one stalker coming and the work gate is about to be finished one gateway is coming up and he sends oh he sees he's seeing the attack he's seeing attack what is his response what is the protoss response he pulls the probes. He knows he has to hold this. He has to hold this. But the Terran is relentless aiming at the uh, vulnerable pylon. And he gets the pylon. Oh, but there was a, second, a secondary pylon built. And the Stalker is going to join. And the natural is being taken by Terran. That was really interesting to see. And the Terran is still going to... Ah, uh, just a little poking. Just a little poking. Just a little poking. More... Marines are being uh, pulled to the other side of the map. Okay, that's it. Oh, yeah, he didn't finish the shading. There is a third shield battery and a gateway. Pure gateway. There is no robotics bay, no stargates, nothing. Pure gate. And the Terran has gone two racks and he's pumping out the Marines and Marauders with concussive shells. 
Oh my god, this, this is looking really fancy. This is looking really fancy. So, what is the plan here for the Terran? What is the plan here? Uh, the Terran army is slowly getting to the other side. A uh, nice little pullback from the Protoss, nice little force fields, and he gets most of the army. Is he gonna push down the ramp? He is, he knows, he knows that the Terran is uh, gonna die if he keeps pushing. Uh, and he gets the Marine! The Marine says, as the Adept kills it, and he chased them all the way to the other side of the map there is only now bunkers uh, the second uh, the bu uh, bunker is being built the second bunker is starting to build but that's way too late for terran terran cannot hold this oh my god the, the, the protoss is there at his front door and the bunkers aren't even there uh, the blink is now uh, finished and uh, protoss is gonna pull, uh, pull back a little bit Terran needs to find an answer and there is the answer a factory with a widow mine building up to, def uh, to defend the front and uh, supply depot oh, very good move he can open up the ramp or uh, like the entrance if he wants to and the two uh, fully bunker uh, full bunkers will deal with the pesky protoss army third base is being taken uh, by the protoss and there are first dank templars Oh, he's suspecting a drop. There are these uh, stalkers guarding this area of the base for a possible drop, but I don't think that a Terran would go for a drop. There's the Observer, and he's uh, destroying the unbuildable plates. But the Terran is behind on bases. Terran is on two bases while the Pro uh, Protoss is getting uh, his third base. Third base being almost ready. Uh, the Dark Templar checking the third base. And oh, uh, he's attacking that. Does the Terran, uh, does the Terran have uh, scans? No, there is an uh, engineering bay for the missile turrets uh, to scout and to uh, provide some detection. Uh, there's a starport, uh, there's still the marine marauder, and there is a steam back. Steam back is being researched for the uh, Terran, and there is the plus one coming for the Protoss and uh, the charge upgrade. Ah, that is starting to slowly to be some sophisticated army. And uh, Protoss is getting more gateways and a robotics bay or, yeah, robotics bay. So there has to be a robotics facility somewhere, is there? Uh, I'm not seeing it. Oh, there is, oh, yeah, I'm not, yeah, there is the robotics bay that allows him to build like colossus or disruptors. So, what is the plan here? Okay, so the Dark Templar is checking the third of the Terran. Terran is, is it moving out of the map? Uh, that is bit wise. Because seeing of the, how uh, like the, ter uh, the Protoss army is slowly building up in numbers, which is really nice. And yeah, we see the external uh, exter extended thermal lands to the pro uh, to the Colossi, which grants them three range. Secondary robotics uh, facilities being added, more gateways and a cannon. So Protoss is going for a quite the amount of splash with the Colossus and of course Colossus are, Colossi are good at dealing with Marines. And there is the Raven, really nice, nice, nice. There isn't a drop play and there is the small guarding air, uh, army on the Terran base. More barracks are being added. Plus one uh, is, uh, is being researched. He's adding armory for those upgrades and second refinery. But he, he uh, Terran is slowly falling behind the, uh, the Protoss economy. Protoss is now securing his fourth base. Are we gonna say like mass colossus? Or not even like mass, but like lots of colossus. Oh my god, if Terran, uh, Terran needs to see this army. He has to see that the extended thermal lens is uh, being ready in just a couple of seconds. The armory is being ready and second starboard is being added. Terran is slightly supply blocked and he realizes that adding uh, two, uh, no, three more uh, supply depots and calling down the supply from the orbital command. 
But is that wasted energy? He doesn't have the mules or the scans. And he is still running on two bases. While the Protoss gets a good scan off the base with the hallucinated phoenix. There are two colossus in the Protoss army. The fourth base is being secured by Protoss. This is starting to look a scary Protoss army, to be honest. Oh my god, there is charge lots. Blink Stalkers, three Colossus, and there's the, uh, there's the fourth on the way. I don't know if the Terran can break this, even with this army. Of course, the, Colo uh, the Marauders are semi good against uh, Colossus, but he needs more of them. Of course, like he can disable them with the Raven, and here comes the Terran push. Uh, he has couple. Uh, he has three Video Mines, at least. Uh, no, more Video Mines, my bad on the army so there's a minor amount of splash the fourth base has been secured with with five photon cannons and a shield battery oh and there are a few shots going off uh, for the protoss but protoss is getting ready there is the warp prism for the possible juggle and you can see the extend extended thermal lands and colossus they are just murdering those marines they are just murdering them. Uh, Terran drops a scan and disables one of the Colossus. Uh, really nice move, really nice move, I like that. And there are more, uh, uh, three more charge slots added and a couple sentries. He is now trying to see if there's an opening on the third base. Uh, steaming in, steaming in. Uh, but no, I don't think that steam is gonna be enough for this. And no, it's not. Yeah, Marines just got barbecued. Oh my god, but he is now gonna poke in, but he has so little army. He has so little army while the Protoss is in beautiful economy, like 85 uh, workers against 53. And his army supply is way higher than uh, the Terran. But the Terran, can he? He is disabling the upgrade. Oh my god, that was huge. He disabled the plus 3 uh, attack upgrade. But there's a couple of Dark Templars are being warped in. And the Marines and the Marauders say goodbye. And... <laughs> Terran taps out. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that was a beautiful game. That was... Oh, that was a beautiful game. Let's see if the Terran can bring himself up from this. Let's see if he can. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, gonna quickly move with the uh, scores right there, and there we go. Playing with the Cyan uh, Protoss uh, pieces spawning on the top left corner of Romanticide, he is Aztecs. And his opponent, playing with the Red Terran pieces spawning on the bottom right corner, he is Prospect. All right, let's see. What well, uh, is Protoss gonna do? Something similar, and if Terran can bring himself to one-one, a very stable opener for the Protoss. There is the pylon high ground. Oh, a very good place. A very nice placement of the gateway. Uh, at least hindering the uh, approach of the Reaper jumping in from the bottom ledge to the base. Terran taking sneaky second base on the third base location. Ah, the, is this gonna be a mind games? But is the Protoss gonna check it? Protoss is suspecting something. At least he's checking all, all the weird map locations, all, all the base uh, locations. And indeed, is he gonna find it? Is he gonna find it? Indeed, he is. He is spotting the hidden natural of the Terran player. Oh my god. Uh, and the... Oh. Uh, <laughs> that was a quick match. 
Yeah, Terran tried to be cheeky, but Protoss, I don't know if he sniffed it out or what it was, but he found it out. And Prospect taps out. Aztec wins 2-0. So, spawning in the blue, playing for the Art of Warfare, it is Jedrix. And spawning in the red, playing for Red Dragons, it is Exo. A PVZ, <coughs> excuse me, in this best of three. Both players are around the same MMR, so it'd be quite interesting to see what they do exo looking for the panel on the low ground let's see if he's going to go for that forge nope we have a gate and he is going to scout from that we are no 12 full from jedrick so we are going to see a hatch first from jedrick so everything looking pretty normal at the moment for both of our players Like I said before, hope everyone's been enjoying the StarCraft stream and all the games that have been casted. Make sure to hit that follow button because we do have the upper bracket and lower brackets tomorrow and the finals on the Sunday. To catch all your favorite players, make sure to tune in. So, we have... The gas and the pool, everything is looking normal from the scout from EXO. And we do see the get expand from EXO as well. Interesting to see what uh, Jedrix does from uh, this two base. Could stay on two base. Um, can get the third. Um, so let's see if that happens. Could be a fake third because you can get the 30 hatchery and 30 roach warren. Uh, and then do a roach attack like that. So I'll just see how Jedrix plays this out. Two queens, four links. Everything looking pretty standard from the Zerg point of view. And we do see Exo going with that cycle just finishing up. And we have the Stargate from EXO. Oh, Lord's going to scout the Stargate and see what uh, Jedrix does with this. Um, still no third. No early lair or anything like that. So let's see what he's doing. He's getting speed coming up. So everything looking pretty normal. So we do have the Void Ray coming out from Exo. Let's see if it's going to be one Stargate or two. So let's see if that's the case. Exo scouting. Doesn't see a third hatch now, but it's delayed. Jedrix only taking that third hatch now because he has invested in the... Overlord speed to get the scouting, even though he has already got the overlords across into Exo's base. I mean, Exo's getting a few kills with the uh, Adept, very nice. Does scout and sees all of what uh, Jedrix is doing, so. We didn't see the third going down, so that could trigger. Needs to get a, a scout off to see, um, see if that's going to uh, come down or not. Let's check his vision. He has not seen it, so. Oracle coming out just to scout and maybe get some more drones because there are now there are some space spores coming down because the time of DTs also hit around 4:30 as well as oracles. So Jedrix is playing it safe. The Overlord has been cleared for the back. Adept's going to stop these links running in. Also with the shield badge there as well, these links are just going to die for free. And Jedrix has seen the Stargate. But he doesn't know there is a second Stargate coming from Exo. So we are going to see Void Rays from Exo Lightning. Oracle is going to go and scout that there is a third. Jedrix actually droning up pretty heavily as well. So there's no early aggression looks like from Jedrix at the moment. He's playing a passive standard game. Macroing up really well. Thank you, Rossi, for the love hearts. So Exo does scout. Going to go around the long way back into the main. 
And behind this, we do see Exo taking his third as well. Bingonest is the next text choice for Jedrix along with the Lair. So it may go Ling Bane Hydra, possibly because he's seen the Stargate. Let's see what he does. Let's see how many drones this uh, Oracle gets. Only the one. And uh, he gets out of there. So another nice little pick off. In total, we have four drones killed from three from the Adept and one from the Oracle. So. We do see the double voids coming out from Exo. Is he getting any ear upgrades? No, he is not. But Jedrick's sitting on 46 drones at the moment. 48 going up to, and Exo's on 47. So pretty good on even uh, work account at the moment. Behind the double Stargate, we do have a Forge, Twilight, and a Robo coming out from Exo as well. So we could see the old uh, charge but Archon with Void Rays and some Immortals. So things are spread out to try and scout. Now it's the first time that Jedrix has seen these uh, amount of Void Rays. So he's going to try and get a fourth. He does have quite a good amount of Queens, but they're all in the main for some reason. And we do have the Hydra list then going down. So it's a response for seeing those Void Rays from Exo. And Exo is going to get this fourth base. There is a good amount of Queens though. That's just going to scout, and he's going to get out of there. Is he going to lose any voids? He does not. That was really close from getting uh, one more shot from those queens, but he does get the cancel, and he does rebuild it straight away. It's a nice little pick off for Exo there. So behind this, both players are now marking really hard. Exo's getting his upgrades, charge, the immortal, and a plus one with his gate. Probably see a Templar archive going down pretty shortly as well. These voids are just trying to scout for any overlords on the map, which they are not. They are back at home for Jedrix. So behind this, we do see the upgrades for the Hydras going around as well. An extra hatch in the main for production. So both players are just building up their armies. These voids are going to be annoying. There's only th uh, you're going to try to get a few more drones. Guess another two. Queens uh, are pushing the voids away, but he hasn't... Uh, got the queens on um, the hatcheries, but he's going to go mass queen, mass hydra, by the looks of things. He's got uh, 10 queens with another 3 on the way. Another 2 on the way. So you're going to have what it, 12 queens and a lot of hydras against this mass air that um, Jedrix, X, uh, Jedrix thinks Exo is going. But behind this, he's going to ground arm. He's getting charged. He's getting immortals. And there's Temple Archives. So he's going to charge arm, Arc on a mortal behind this. So, I don't know how, how well that fares up against the charge lots and Archons and Immortals with the Mass Queen, Mass um, Hydra comp. So, let's see how this goes. So, Exo still hasn't got a fourth. Uh, the fourth is now finished for uh, Jedrix and getting these drones going in to that mineral line. Queens have been shift clicked to uh, inject and then back into one spot. Very nice. So both players are just building up their armies right now. So he's going to get that plus two with the mortals. He needs to get a fourth because he's oversaturated in at the main. The voids are looking to do some more scouting to see what's going around. Could pick off this queen here. Uh, there's a few hydras in position here to pick this off. There's no spore at the base on the third. Obviously you're going to come in and see what's going on. Does see all the gateways now. So Jedrix is probably wondering where all the air army is does place down a cheeky little chain link to see everything and we do see the lurker den and spire okay so we could see corruptors and the annoying lurkers being produced but here come the voids again trying to see what's going on possibly going to snipe this base the queen does see it so no, he's going to get one queen now is he going to get this base before the reinforcements arrive. He is not. Does scout it though. He's going to lose one void. He's going to lose two. He loses two voids. Okay. But Exo does get the scout off. Exo's very much an army supply lead as well. So he does have a big time in attack. And here comes Exo. The big army coming Jedrix's way. Bailings are being produced. All the queens are split. The army's split in position. Bane's over here with all the hydras. 
all in the middle of the map here. So Jedrick's in the middle. So he's going to lose this space if he's not too careful. So let's go do a run by on the third as well. So here comes Exo. He's going to pick off uh, these queens pretty easily. He's going to waltz on in. He's going to pick off this uh, um, base pretty easily. There was a uh, stasis war going down to stop the uh, Lings and Baneless coming in, which is going to trigger quite a few. So there's a lot of Baneless rushing in to kill onto the Archons and Immortals, but they're quite tanky. There's only Hydras left. There's still a lot of army for Exo coming through here. A warping coming from behind as well, and this army is obliterated by Exo. Exo storming through with the Zealous Archons and Immortals. Void is still alive as well. Spines are up. Queens are trying to do as uh, much damage as possible with their health. But it looks like Exo has got game one, and he does. Game one to Exo. So well played by... Um, Exo there with the double voids. Right, so what was the next map? The next map is Jaganatha. So let me just get that done quickly. So let's see if uh, Exo goes for those double voids again on Jaganatha. He possibly can because how big the map is. But let's see if Jedrick changes up his build. But before I change anything, in the bottom left hand side, in the blue play for the Art of Warfare, it is Jedrick's. Top right hand side in the red plane for red dragons. One game up it is Exo. Right. Is it? What? Aha! Did the scores correctly? Woohoo! Right, so we have the panel on the low ground again. No 12 pool from a Jedrick. Plane stand at the moment, getting some a drone. She's going to do the 16 hatch. But Exo was sending the probe across, but decided not to. He's going to put the gate down and then scout. Okay. Jedrix is probably waiting for just a dog emoji. Cool. Gets the hatch, followed by gas, then pull, most likely for Jedrix. Exo is now sending his um, probe across rather than trying to block the hatchery he doesn't want to deal with that micro just wants to get his build sorted <coughs> excuse me everything looking standard so from last game hope everyone enjoyed the last game interesting to see if exo sticks with what worked from last game with the double voids and I see if Jedrix changes his style, if he becomes more aggressive. Um, because as I said, there's not many much ground army if you go in double Stargate. So it's interesting to see if Jedrix will go, say, like an early Rotron, like I said last game, when it pushes. So Exo just being there with his probe. Scout everything, same as Jedrix's Overlord, slowly but surely, gracefully floating across the map to get into the overlord spot to scout everything and you'll see that exo has expanded with one gate everything looking pretty standard again at the moment same again with the two queens four lings exo just scan around to see if any tech goes down early from jedrick so nice scouting the adept and warp gates and everything are pretty standard for the matchup so far the links do kill the probe Let's see if these links will go across the map. I think he's going to possibly scout to see if there's anything proxied. So he is seeing if there's actually anything there, like a pylon. No. So, so the difference in this game, Exo has got the Twilight Cancel. And the Overlord does scout it. And the Robo, Twilight Robo. Could we see DTs? That's an early Twilight. The Adept scouts that there is a third as well, which will please Exo because it's not a two base play from our Zerg. So Exo is going to get the second gate. The Stalker is going to try and kill the Overlord, which it will, but it ha will have seen everything, so it doesn't matter what uh, happens to that Overlord right now. The Shade has happened with the Adept, it's going to get into the main. It does. No drone kills this time, but scouts everything again that Jedrix has. A so nice scouting again from Exo. Speed is about to finish. 
And there's the lair, so lair coming up nicely as well. We are seeing Dark Templar! And we do see the Roach Warren for Jedrix as well, so... So Spore should go down about 4.30 like he did last game. The other build that's a uh, pop at the minute is the uh, Adept Printer. Um, so we... Jedrix may be thinking that the Adept is something that Exo does and seen in his match history. But we do see... Um, oh, we already got the... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> War Prison coming out. Uh, we do see the Safety Spores coming out in the main... And natural, but not at the third. So if Exo attacks the third, we could get some damage done over there. The Dark Shrine is about to complete as well. We're going to see four gates also completed. War Prism on the way. One Stalker in the wall. So Ling's going to sit on the third and fourth. So these things aren't going to get in. The War Prism is about to deploy. Nice timing as soon as the War Prism Deploys, three DTs are coming in, and there's no spore. So these DTs straight away attacking at the hatchery. Overseers are being produced. I think this hatchery is going to go down because four DTs do a lot of damage very quickly. Eight roaches are being produced, and the DTs do snipe the hatchery. So overseers are out, so the uh, Exo is going to get these boys out of there, and he does. So Jedrix is going a lot more roaches. He's up to nine roaches already with six more in production. So we could just uh, um, uh, come across the map and counterattack because there's only be one immortal, a shield battery. And Exo's trying to try and take a third. Exo's going to try and drop these Archons in, but Jedrix is coming across the map with a big old army here. And I don't think Exo can hold with just the Stalker and Immortal. So let's see what happens here. So we actually may recall the war prism, but these roaches are going to... He has recalled it. So... Two battery has gone down on the stalker. Stalker is going to stay alive. The Archons have come back in this four centuries as well. So at the moment, Jedrix is still producing uh, roaches and lings at the moment. So he's going to go a two base all in here. Archons are being dropped onto the uh, ravagers that are being morphed right now. So... So they can't shoot up and the war prism stays alive and, unless he gets hit by the biles, which is not going to. Does Jedrick see the third? He does not. He could try and attack the third, but he hasn't seen it yet. He's so focused on trying to break through the nat uh, through the natural. But Exo's uh, third is still alive, so he has moved across these T's. It still doesn't see it. Biles coming off. Good splits by Exo. He is pushing away from the shield battery, though, but there are two uh, um, Archons. While Archon has gone down... Bar's going to go on the Stalkers. Do pick up a few Stalkers, but the, uh, the other Archon has gone down now, so the Firepower is gone. So Exo thought he could fight that, but a lot more Stalkers being warped in right now. Bar's is going to get the uh, Cyber Core, so now the Lynx can just rush in. There is an Immortal in the back as well. Another Super Battery is going to uh, start for Exo. Bar's do get one more Stalker. Exo's third is still alive. The Jedrix is going to try and get a third up and running from this. But uh, the push has faltered a little bit for Jedrix. The War Prism is going to go across and just do a counter attack. There's a lot more Lings trying to come through as well. He needs to get the Cyber Core back up, which um, he hasn't at the moment. There is going to be uh, some Zealots on the field. It does have charge, so that's a nice sign. Extra ah, so Jedrix's next plan of action is the Nidus. So more Rajas being produced as well. DTs are being warped in. Probably going to snipe this base again. So another nice snipe is going to happen on this base again by Exo. Is he going to get these units back? He is. So Jedrix has to go back to try and defend against this. Overseer is only being produced now because he lost them over across uh, trying to get the natural. He's going to get his links to go back. So rather than attacking the uh, hatchery, he has killed a few drones. Kills another queen. Overseer has finished and Exo is not focused on it. He is. Right, so Nidus has gone down right now. So it might panic Exo, but he can take it. If he just pushes out right now, he can take this fight. No problem at all, but he doesn't know that yet. Eight more roaches are being produced. So when they pop, they're going to come through as well. Exo sees it. He's going to push out and try and kill the 
Nidus gets it straight away. Push on top of Jedrix's army. Nice battles again hit by Jedrix. Uh, immortals are doing a lot of damage in the back. He just can't get the Immortals. Good battles on the army, but there's too much for Jedrix. Ah, uh, GG. Good luck by Jedrix. And Exo takes the game. So, born on Death Aura. In the blue, we have the best Zerg on the planet today. It is Serral. But he's facing the sexy Scotsman playing for Red Dragons in the red. The Protoss player, it is Roscoe. So, the sexy Scott will be the best Zerg. Who will win? Let me know in the chat. So, we're not seeing the Serral do a custom <coughs> build. So we're just going to see uh, a pro come and stop the expansion. Oh, it's not going to like that. So I was trying to get the probe to go away, but will Roscoe put the pylon down? He is not. He's just been annoying, really annoying with the probe. He is going to put the pylon down to stop the expansion. So the pool does go down because of it. And uh, Cell is going to take... Yeah, he's going to take the base on the lower third. Roscoe does stop at the pylon. I guess his pro back into position. Gate expand, it looks like for Roscoe. So everything looking normal. Just interesting to see what Sarah will do from getting blocked on the natural. So we'll build he's gonna go for. So everything all looking pretty standard so far. Bit of a MMR difference for um, <coughs> Daryl and Roscoe. <coughs> Excuse me. Probably about uh, 2,000 MMR. Maybe 1,800. So we're going to see how Roscoe gets on against Daryl. So we're going to see what tech uh, Roscoe wants to go for. We do see the Adept coming out, that's going to be for scouting. Speed has started, Queen, and we do see a third going down for Serral 24. Pretty nice early three hatch build for Serral. We do see the Twilight Council at the back of the base for uh, Roscoe here. So we, are we going to see the DT build like we've seen with Exo in the last game? Stalker to push the Overlord away. Overlord is going to go in now. Uh, units. The Adept is across the map. For Roscoe. So let's see what he gets scouted. And we do see a Robo down as well. So everything's looking pretty similar. The Overlord is may scout it, may not. The Shade hasn't happened. The uh, Adept's going to go in now. It's going to trigger these four links to attack. It is. Ross is going to save the Adept. He is. He's going to try and see what how many drones on the natural, but only one or two. More links being produced. And the links uh, don't chase the Adept. And we are. We are seeing the Dark Shrine again. So we are going to see a DT drop into Archon drop. To snipe the third, or from blocking the natural, to kill the uh, natural, which is now the third of Serral. <coughs> and to win from there, so Warpers are already going out as well. So Lings are going out onto the map to see what's going on. I don't know if... He hasn't seen anything in the back, so he's, he does see three Adepts. So, that is to trigger the fact that he could be the Adept build. Roach Warren is going to go down straight away. So, he sees the Adepts coming out for Adepts. He's building masked lings for this. Little does Serral know. He's actually being fooled. And DT's is going to be the option. Is there a lair? There is not. Are there spores? There is not. So, these DT's could run riot. 
So there's the Adept. The lanes are coming out just trying to find the Adept, but he does see them. He does see a four shade. But there's three DTs in the main. So as we look at Cyril's vision. He doesn't see it at the moment. All of a sudden he sees DTs in the main. Now he sees it. The layers are only just starting. A lot of drones are going to go down to these DTs. So game one. Where the very smooth DT drop goes to Roscoe. So, Rossi with one game up. Top left in the blue, playing for Red Dragons, the sexy Scott. It is Roscoe. Going right inside in the red, one game down, surprisingly. The number one Zerg in the world, Serral. Must be having a fuzzy head from all the IAM games that he played. So we see no really poor shenanigans again. So we are going to see the hatch. Is the probe going to stop the hatch again? Or is uh, it looks like he's taking an earlier hatch to make sure the probe doesn't stop it. So a little, see the little difference there? Doesn't do the same thing again. Make sure the hatchery is going down. Those little things matter in a game of StarCraft 2 at this level. So we do see the gates, so no cannon rush of any sort from Roscoe. See the gas, gonna get a second gas. Roscoe is scouting everywhere. <coughs> and he sees the tech go down with the gas pool, everything looking standard so far. Doesn't mean that Zerg can easily just go, I know, I'm just going to flood the lings at this point. Because everything looks standard. So Ross is still going to be careful. Keeping that probe alive. To see if the third is going to go down. And making sure if any links come across the map. And we see the standard Nexus. Then at Cybercore for Roscoe. And then the gas. So let's just interested to see what Roscoe goes in this game. Is he going to copy Exo again. And go for the double void rays. Can you see DTs again. Because it worked well last game. And what we'll see out from Serral. Will he change his game? Will he go more aggressive? Will he do a two base play? Lots and lots of considerations. But everything is looking standard so far. Also, if people know who this Serral is, don't spoil it in the chat for people who don't know. It's a very good meme to have for Epic Lan. So, we think Fake Serral is better. Of course we do. So, Lings, push. We'll kill the probe. Uh, the third has gone down. Roscoe sends in his Adept across the map again. Twilight Cancel is the tech choice. So, no, it's going to be a quick robo again. We do. So everything's looking similar to last game with the good old DTs. Queen is going to push the Adept away this time, though. Shaded away so we can't kill it. Very nice. Stalker killing the Overlords. Everything is similar to last game. Now, will Serral build spores this game around the time of the DTs? Or just before? I would say around about 350. Ah, we are going to see the other version. Which looks similar to this. And that is the... Glaive Adept Printer Build. The, the gate's going down for Roscoe. So we are going to see about eight Adepts walked in just before five minutes and hitting the mineral line of Serral. And we do see the rush run at the back of the natural to hide it. At the moment, uh, Serral is on 32 drones. So, Warp Gate is finished. Four Adepts being warped in at the front. Was killed off by a Ling, so he knows that two Adepts are there. Send in another Ling across the map to see what's going on. We'll see the four shades of the Adepts. So, what, so Roachron will finish just in time. War Prism is coming across the map as well. So, Roaches will be produced. Does get seen by the Overlord. 
So all gears are now finished. Cree spread is being pushed forward. There's the eight adepts. So let's see how many drones this gets, but there are seven roaches being produced. Eight roaches being produced. So it's a very good timing that Roscoe is hit with a warp in, but there are eight roaches being produced. Are they going to spawn at the same time? So how many uh, drones are going to get killed here with these adepts? Two down so far. Queens are doing some damage to the adepts, but they're not going down yet. Drones are now only being pulled. The shade has happened. Five workers, six. The shade now going into the main. He's going to pick off another queen. Ten drones. Oh, there's a lot of drones being picked off here. Behind this, Roscoe is getting an immortal just for the roaches' uh, counter attack. Oh, that's a lot of drones being killed. 18 workers so far. There's more adepts coming into the natural as well. There's no drones here to actually kill, only units, so. There's a lot of adepts still here. He's gonna pick off a th gonna pick off the hatch. He's gonna shade up into the main. He may counter it, he does. So he's gonna try and pick off this hatch. Does he get the hatch? 18 workers have gone down to this adept pressure. The shade again, just to, not to fake these uh, units going forward. The queen does get the transfuse on it. So Rast is not making any more drones. He's making uh, links and more army units. He just picked off these ravagers here in the, in the third. So this adept is doing really a lot of work here. He's going to pick off another queen. Wow. He's still warping in adepts. He's not stopping. He's going to go for the third. A spire is going to go down, but I don't think uh, Sarah's going to have the um, economy to get any sort of mutas out. He's going to clear this up. Is he going to get the hatchery? Oh, four hit points on the hatchery. Go for it. Go for it. He's not going to go for it. He's going to go for more drones. Does he have a transfuse? He doesn't have a transfuse. He could go for the hatchery. Oh, he does have a transfuse now. Oh, so close. But there's no drones to kill. Three more drones have been killed. The war person is going to come in and get uh, some more drones here. Is he going to go for the hatchery? He's not. He's going for more drones and more uh, lings. So behind this, Roscoe is going to try and get a third. But army units wise, he only has two immortals and a stalker versus nine roaches. And uh, Serral could produce just some more units and come across. The spire is going to finish. He does have some gas. So, so a few moves can do a bit of counter damage here. I don't think Roscoe has seen uh, the mutas in until they pop, basically, uh, down to the rally points. So if mutas pop from these eggs over here, it'll go past the observer. You will see it. So only one muta can be produced at the minute, though. Is he supply blocked? He is supply blocked. So he's only got one muta coming out at the moment. And he's producing zealots. So these mutas can do a bit of counter damage. I don't know how much, though. Because in total, 23 workers have gone down to that adept pressure. So it is almost complete for Roscoe. Five muters. Okay. So units wise, one stalker. One stalker will not kill five muters, I'm afraid. So more gates are going to go down. There's no shield batteries. There's no cannons in the mineral lines. So Roscoe could be blind to this unless it goes past the observer. I don't know if it's been seen by the observer, but Roscoe is not building any more because he's going for charge. A lot of gates are going down. So we'll follow the Mulis around the map. He's going to go through the natural. If he goes through the natural, the observer should see it. Temple Archive is going to go down. So Archons are a great choice against the Muters. Um, depends how many Muters that uh, Serral goes for here. He's still producing them. He could just go back into Roaches. He does go past the observer. Did Roscoe see it? He's moving on a war prison. I don't know if he's seen it or not. Depends on what he was focusing on. But he is moving out with the classic sentry immortal. Uh, he's going to push against the music. and see it. He could snipe the war prison with the mutas. And that's going to follow this attack. Then there's a counter push play as well. So here come the roaches. The mutas are going to come in from the side as well. Great force field. So roaches are going to die straight away. Stalkers are being produced, but the war prism stays alive before that uh, stalker warp in. Shield comes up from the sentries as well. Just push it away. So this attack has to do some damage with this. It's going to cancel the fourth. But the Mew is going to do some counter damage. So this can get a lot of uh, probes here. So Roscoe is going to push the uh, army forward and try and do some more damage and get another base. But the Mew is instead 
of getting pro kills are going backwards. The stalker's being walked up at home. So Roscoe doing well with the force fields, kills another base. There are mutas here. We'll clear this away. There are stalkers coming in. Another warp prism coming in. It's going to get sniped straight away by uh, Serol. But uh, some more stalkers in the back as well to try and kill these mutas. But is there too much firepower on the, on the low ground to kill the um, immortals? Stalker's going to come in as well. Some overlords being picked off. That's going to supply block Serol here. There's a lot of spines being produced in the natural to break. So uh, Serol's not going down without a fight here without these, all these spine crawlers. Some more stalkers being produced as well. They don't think they have blink. They don't have blink, but... I think Serol had an opportunity there with the... Uh, if he's producing all these spines to um, put these mutes across in the other base uh, into Roscoe and just get some probe kills. Because there's nothing there to kill. The cannons weren't there. So mutes are going to go across now to pick off the uh, stalkers coming in. These stalkers are going to push in to try and kill the spine crawlers. The Moors are going to do a lot of damage against these spine crawlers. He's going to try and kill the uh, mutalisks. He's picked off a couple. A war prison back in again. More stalkers being produced. Still no blink. Just going to go mass stalker. GG, well played by Serol. <coughs> and Roscoe takes game two and wins series 2-0. Loading up into our next game here. This is some drunk Canadian. Uh, going to take you on till uh, we finish up tonight. Loading up into this next game. Playing in the bottom right corner. For, I believe that is that was awesome. Uh, this is Space Marine playing the lot, top left corner in the blue Protoss pieces. For RD, we have Roscoe. So we have ourselves a PvP here. Uh, another best of three. I believe we have four series left today, um, and uh, should all be good ones. All right. So both players going gateway first. Uh, both players with the high ground pylon. Um, Roscoe's pylon is a little closer to the ramp. Uh, it makes it a little more vulnerable if you are going to get cannon rushed. But that clearly isn't the case here today. Uh, and whereas, uh, sorry, Space Marines uh, Gateway is a little further back. Mm. Sorry, just having a slight issue here. Okay. Both players going as Cybernetics Core. Uh, Space Marine going off a scout behind that. Roscoe deciding not to scout. Getting a full scout out here. Probably looking for that second pylon. Uh, hasn't scouted that second. It's just nibbling away at this. We'll see what units come out of here. The second pylon is being made in base, so there is no proxy here. We'll see the two adepts pop out. Uh, adepts will chase this probe down. Uh, adepts all right finally decided to kill uh get the kill uh these two stalkers will pop out and try to get a kill on uh we'll get a kill on this pylon uh the pylon does scout that the two uh stalkers came out and it was immediately followed by two more units being built out which are sentries shade uh, adepts will try to shade in here they will get denied by this uh ba shield battery uh the shield battery should be cancelled relatively soon uh depths will come in here we'll see the next two units out our sentries both players getting their naturals 
and both birds getting another sentry. Depths will get denied yet again. These adepts are going to keep shading in until they get in or they get killed off. They'll get denied here again. What do we have going on down here? So we have a forge and a robo facility coming down. So Robotech is a choice here. Whereas over here, we are uh, seeing the Twilight Council. So it will be Robotech versus Twilight. Hallucinate Phoenix coming in for the scout by Space Marine. And the first unit out of the uh, Robo facility. Ooh, do I not have sound? There we go. First unit out is um, a Warp Prism. Blink gets started over here for Space Marine. Both players are going up to plus one ground attack. Both players are going to just send out Hallucinated Phoenixes uh, to keep uh, tabs on the opponent, see what they're doing, keep an eye on their tech. Uh, sees the number of gateways, sees that the forge is spinning, so there's definitely an upgrade coming in there. We'll potentially also scout a nice landing spot for this warp prism. What do we have in here? We have two adepts. So two adepts getting into that mineral line could cause quite a bit of havoc. Now, if we warp in four adepts, or two more adepts, then we have four adepts. That's going to be even more havoc. All right, there we go. Nope. There we go. Getting that fourth adept. Roscoe going to drop them off here. Roscoe is up to three bases. Um, sorry, not Roscoe. Space Marine. Roscoe is going for the drop. Uh, Space Marine will spot this. Uh, will get a kill on that worker. Will jump on top of that sentry. Nice snipe on the sentry. A nice name on another sentry, I believe. That's two sentries that went out. Yep. Sentries are quite gas-heavy units, so that is an expensive loss. Uh, do have how many workers here? Eight workers going down in total, it looks like. Nine workers going down. That is definitely... The two sentries and workers uh, being killed there is definitely worth uh, the cost of four adepts. Uh, where is that war prism? War prism is over here, back at home. Third base now being taken by Roscoe. Uh, despite that, uh, Ros actually, no, Roscoe is ahead in workers. What am I talking about? Uh, army supply is about even. Uh, little uh, Roscoe needs to better utilize his workers. There we go. Moving three over to the gas. Uh, what else is get he has uh charge coming up plus two both players have coming up. both players have charge coming up Roscoe is getting the Twilight Council so we're gonna see Archons or Storm here uh, in this matchup I am gonna guess it's Archons and not Storm uh, so the High Templar will be used for that uh, another Luce Phoenix by Space Mar uh, Marine coming in here and scouting this uh, out sees where the army is knows the army's at home not gonna have to move out. Col uh, Coloss House of Colossi Robo Bay is coming out. So we're going to see either Colossi or Disruptors coming out here. Uh, Disruptors, a great equalizer of our time if there ever was one. Um, Space Marine, just on skipping that one gas in the natural, getting his two gases in the third now. And uh, Roscoe deciding it's time to move on out and move across the map. So we do have it's Archon, Stalker, Sentry push here yes yes that's exactly what it is uh plus two about to finish uh it looks like uh roscoe will have about a 30 second advantage with plus two uh moving now into this uh third base location there is one shield battery here uh there's one shield battery a little further up might catch uh 
Space Marine a little out of position on the low ground. Uh, charge lots will come in. We'll snipe one Stalker right off the bat. Two Stalkers going down. Uh, kind of disjointing the army from the main base. This can be dangerous. Oh no, forcing him into a choke. Beautiful force fields. Uh, do they not have blink? Is there no blink? No, uh, there is blink. Uh, he's not choosing to blink over yet. Loses the warp prism. First disruptor ball comes out. Whiff and loses the disruptor. Uh, workers are pulled. Workers are now going down with these uh, warp in of charge loss in the main base. Um, not going to lie. Space Marine is in quite a bit of trouble here. We might just see a GG coming relatively soon. Um, that second base does go down. I think he's just digesting the loss. Cyber and X-Core is going down. There are more zealots in the base than buildings. GG gets called. Going on to game number two. So here we go into our next game. All right. Playing in the bottom right corner of Lightshade in the orange Protoss places, we have Space Marine. Top left corner in the blue Protoss pieces, we have Roscoe. All right, High Garon Pylon again on both sides. Oops, sorry. Roscoe's first building is going to be... It is a gateway. Gateway for both players, so nothing crazy. No cannon rushes. Uh, that was kind of known with the lack of probes on the map. Both players getting their gases. Pretty mirrored built openings for mirrored plays. All right, uh, what do we have here? Double uh, gateway openers for both players. Uh, looks like Space Marine is going for a scout off of that. Cybernex core down for both players. Space Marine will come in here and get a full scout out. Uh, there is a hidden pylon here in the bottom left corner by Roscoe. Uh, Space Marine is going to notice there is a lack of pylon. That does, uh, the Cybernex core is not turning and it is a Stargate. So he should know there is something out on the map, likely a Stargate. Uh, sees two units being chronoed out, out of the gateway. It is two adepts. We'll scout that with this pylon. Back at home, he is building two stalkers, which is the right response to Stargate. Uh, so that is a great blind counter. It looks like he's now going to go scout around, looking for that hidden pylon, seeing what's out there. Okay, this, gate, uh, this Stargate is about to finish, getting a two sentries behind this. Uh, Roscoe now getting two more stalkers. There's an Oracle coming out behind this. There's nothing coming out of that cybernetics core. Okay, so actually, I lied. Just as I say that, of course, Caster's Curse. Uh, just as I say that, Roscoe starts his uh, warp gate research a little late, but coming nonetheless. These two stalkers will come in here. They will get one worker kill. Base Marine still hasn't seen this. Base Marine getting a Templar, uh, or sorry, Twilight Council, which again is the right response to Stargate play. Uh, will deny these adepts from coming in. They're going to try to get a snipe on one of the uh, uh, sentries. Will not get it, but will kill one of the workers. Uh, will get cleaned up by these stalkers and sentries. And where is that oracle? Where's that first oracle? Okay, he's going to bunch two oracles together. 
and move out. These two oracles going to come in here. Uh, very naked uh, mineral line. Only one stalker. And let the killing begin. Workers going down. Um, bit of a slow response by Space Marine. Guardian Shield does get popped. One uh, adept. Sorry. One, both of them go down there. Uh, how many workers is that? 12 workers. So 11 workers killed by those two. Uh, or 10 workers, I should say. By those two uh, oracles. Back at home. Nexus is about to finish up at the natural. Uh, up ahead by 11 workers in this game. Uh, Roscoe in, command, in a commanding lead here. His robo facility has finished. He's getting his first immortal. Um, let's just confirm that. Yeah, getting his first immortal. Both players just on uh, Sentry Stalker. Immortals, a great counter to that. Nothing coming out of the Stargate now. Um, Blink about to finish up for our orange Protoss player here. Uh, plus one is about quarter of the way done, a third of the way done. So he will have an upgrade advantage if that uh, attack from Roscoe is a little delayed. War Prism on its way out. Forge also just getting dropped, just about to finish, actually. Oh, I like this. Uh, two forward gateways for fast warp ins. Uh, aggression on the front lines. Twilight Council just getting dropped now for our blue Protoss player. Roscoe still ahead on workers. His lead is actually growing. He's now about 14 workers ahead. Plus one finishing up and just about to finish up and that triggers uh, Space Marine to move on out. Uh, this proxy does get scouted by the move out of this oracle or of that uh, um, war prism. These two adepts will get cleaned up here. And we're now going to get uh, warp ins on the front line, th uh, four stalkers at a time. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have three shield batteries going up. Four, we'll have five shield batteries in total. One has finished, four coming up. Um, don't have energy for battery overcharge, but that should be available relatively soon. A uh, third base probe does get taken out, so that third base is not going to go up just yet. Clusen and Phoenix are going to come in. We'll scout this. There is one immortal here. Charge is started up here for our blue Protoss player. Looks like this War Prism is moving across the map. It will get scouted. It does kind of hesitant, double-minded, uh, goes back and forth. These Stalkers will pick it off. Uh, so now our Orange Protoss player does not have to worry about any Warpins in his base. Uh, he's now also free to take his own third base. Uh, I don't know what the hesitation is here. It might be just a mass amount of shield batteries. That is a lot of shield batteries. A cannon now going down as well. Uh, shield battery overcharge still not available. And uh, Space Marine actually deciding to head back home. Dude. Uh, he still doesn't know about the Stargate here, hidden here. Third base about halfway done. Uh, plus two ground attack uh, coming up for Roscoe. Okay, Depth's going to come in here. Depths do get cleaned up here. Uh, they get one worker kill. No, that was from before. Uh, three Immortals here and Charge Lot. Uh, this is quite a powerful army. This will get shut down. Um, I almost feel like that Space Marine lost a good opportunity, although those shield batteries finishing up was quite daunting. Uh, five shield batteries 
and with a handful of immortals is quite a qu quite a wall to try to break through um oh no space marine is going to come up here and try to clean this up that will drag him out of position he's now going to get flanked from behind by the main army of this blue protoss uh actually no going to rotate around and they decide not to just decide not to uh not worth it uh the blue protoss uh roscoe is now going to move towards what would have been another third base location uh it's going to probably come up this ramp into the natural uh space marine at his third base uh again is risking being separated from the natural and the third kind of like last game We'll come in here. Archon's up front. Archon's doing a lot of damage to those uh, lighter units like the Zealots and the Sentries. The sen Zealots essentially evaporate. There's like one or two, no Zealots left at all. The Archons are literally untouched. Literally. Uh, workers are now starting to go down. The shield batteries are trying to heal the workers. But the damage of this Protoss army is just too great. We'll come back in here. Force field's not really doing anything. Um, and yeah, this army is just being routed. The uh, upgrade uh, advantage, the sophisticated army, the immortals, it is just doing a lot. Now, a lot of the arc, all the archons are dead. Most of the stalkers are dead. Just two immortals really left in this army. The sentry's gone. But that should still be enough to do a decent amount of damage. Potential clean this up. Shield batteries are drained. GG, well played. Roscoe taking the series. Should be a good one. All right, playing in the top left corner in the green Protoss pieces, we have E Punk's Walk. Bottom right corner playing for RD. I think it's RD. We have in the blue Terran pieces, we have Mono. So, got ourselves a TV. Uh, Z here. Um, one of the matches I really enjoy watching, not one of the matches I enjoy playing at all. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, uh, building the bunk uh, barracks at home on the high ground, standard opener. Uh, hatch first, so we will see Hatch Gas pull out of walk here. All right, it looks like an 18 scout for Mono coming up here. Yeah, there we go. Hatch, Gas, and this drone's going to be a pool. There we go. Little pooly boy. SCV moving its way across the map. SCV going to come in here. Scouts the hatch. Sees the timing on the pool. No, there's nothing crazy coming up. No early shenanigans. Able to build that uh, command center on the low ground. Reapers out first. Second unit as a Marine. Pretty standard stuff. Overlord will scout that Reaper. Four safety links coming up from our uh, Zerg player. Drones pulled off gas. Speed probably will start relatively soon, as soon as the minerals are there. Speed. Speed. All right. Reaper's here. Reaper will weaken one of the links. The links will get uh, microed back. Queen about to pop. As soon as the queen pops, you know, this is all over for the Reaper's harass. Oh, we'll uh, damage one of the drones, but not too badly. Third base is down for our Zerg player. Factory finishing up. So it is going to be 1-1-1 one, one, one play. Reaper will be kept at base uh, speed. Finally starting up about the quarter way through. Let's 
this overlord has seen that the factory has swapped over and that it is working. So that is a good indication that uh, we're going to see Hellions coming out of here. All right, our Zerg player is just droning up, continuing to drone, build up his economy, get that worker count up. Uh, Reaper heading back home with no kills. Liberator coming out. Uh, this will all get scouted by this uh, overlord that's going to get sacked. Double Hellions being pumped out. There's already four Hellions out. It looks like we'll be six Hellion, one Reaper push. This worker deciding, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to take the day off today. And then the boss like, no, you don't. You got to build that command center. Uh, so third base going down as part of the wall at the natural. We have bailing that's coming on up. We have more links coming. We have a spore coming in the main base. Uh, pretty standard stuff so far. Another two Hellions coming on out here. A Viking coming out as well. I assume we'll be doing Overlord duty. Make sure there's no cheeky Nidises in the back of the base. Third base about halfway done. And we have a move out with this group of eight Hellions and uh, a Reaper. It does get scouted. Double engineering bait does get dropped. Two more uh, barracks coming down. So there's is going to be bio play behind this. Um, this is just here to harass, get some workers, get a queen kill, maybe push back the creep. Looks like a second queen will go down here. Uh, not quite. We'll get repelled by the other reinforcing queens. Uh, scan will clear a couple creep tumors. Slow down that creep spread. Uh, there is a baneling nest ready. Lair just finishing up now. Oh, no. These uh, roaches are going to get surrounded. Of, sorry, not roaches. These uh, hellions. A good chunk of them will go down. Only three survive, but all the lings will also get cleaned up here. Uh, the roaches are going to head back to their base. Third base is now being floated over to this triangular position. Uh, that overlord will get taken out by that uh, scouting viking. Uh, how many overlords? So it's taken out two overlords so far. Uh, the uh, Liberator also went down. I did not notice that going down. Uh, macro Hatch now going up in the main base as well. Baneling Speed coming out. So it looks like Walk is going to go heavy Ling Bane uh, style. Uh, double Evolution Bays, uh, Evolution Chambers coming as well. Uh, where are you guys going? Where are you guys going? the main base oh there's no okay that's kind of weird anyways fourth base about to pop about three quarters of the way done here third base is fully saturated for mono let's see what else mono is up to so he's going bio he's working off of five barracks uh so essentially Eight Marines and a Marauder, but in this case, it is a Marine, so um, nine Marines at a time. One one is finished. I uh, don't see an armory just yet. Uh, stim pack or stim sh is finished, I believe, as well. Yes, it is. Uh, combat shields about to finish up. Has Hellbat, so he does have an armory. I just don't know where the hell it is. This Overseer will get picked off. Uh, walk is now a little supply blocked gonna scan in and take out some creep this is actually quite a powerful push coming up here uh able to really dislodge the third base of a terror a zerg player these queens kind of being caught out of position they're gonna go after the uh tanks they will get cleaned up here nice surround by the links will clean up the tanks none of the workers going down a lot of this oh, all the bio force is essentially gonna get cleaned up here uh, 
and uh, Mono is held back this way here. We do have a Ling run by. Uh, not sure if any workers went down. Yeah, a lot of workers must have gone down there. Let's take a look here. 27 workers have gone down this game. So uh, I imagine this entire mineral line went down to these links, uh, forcing the lift off. Continued link production. Plus one, plus one for Zerg is about to finish up here. Plus two, plus two, just starting for our Terran player. Uh, our Zerg player is just routing our Terran player with... Oh no, the depot's down. Depot's down. Okay, there's going to be some uh, Marines here. A lot of medevacs should be able to hold this. Does clean that up. Could have been much more disastrous. This base will likely go down here. It is only on 50 hit points, and it is burning. Uh, 42, 40 hit points. I need to get an SCV there ASAP. Need to get an SCV there ASAP. Mono, okay, we do have SCVs there. They are repairing backup. That is not going to die. Uh, walk now taking a fourth base. Lings are going to head back. Plus two, plus two for the Lings are starting up. Plus two, plus two for the Marines are about halfway there. Uh, fourth base now just about to finish up for our Terran player. Uh, what else is going on here? Infestation Pit is out for our Zerg player. But no hive just yet, so I assume we might see Infestors. Uh, Zerg is now taking the furthest bases they could uh, potentially take. Getting uh, this high ground base over here, getting the top uh, 12 o'clock base here, getting this, uh, let's say, 8 o'clock base down here. Terran is going to try to deny some of this. We'll get a kill on that base. No cancel, but a kill. Uh, the Zerg economy is pretty strong, so it's not the end of the world for the Zerg to lose that base. Uh, gonna come in here. Not really surrounded. Tanks in good position in the back. Nah, the bio is just dying, dying, dying to the... Uh, uh, to the Banelings that come crashing in. I do like that... Uh, Walk did macro back, micro back his bays after the Marines were or the bio was largely taken care of, so he doesn't waste them. And just use the links to clean that up. Um, there are a lot of medevacs here. Let's see how many medevacs we have. We have 10 medevacs, uh, and 19 Marines, so we, it, it's kind of like the buddy system right now for the Terran army. Uh, every two Marines share one medevac plus three plus three coming up for our Terran player. Fourth base is now being floated over. Uh, sides, no. You know what? I'm going to take this other fourth base. There are links and a oh no accidental swarm host waiting here. Uh, don't you just hate it when this happens? You hit, I believe it is the A key instead of the Z key and you now have an over uh, a swarm host that you have no need for and you just kind of got to sack it. Um, this base will not be able to land until a force comes by and cleans it up. Uh, there's just Lings here. Just Lings. Just Ling Bane army. Uh, getting a third evolution chamber now. Um, 40 more Lings coming on up. Uh, Hive has finished. I'd like to see plus three, plus three begin. Plus three, plus three, four. Our Terran player is about halfway done. Uh, Economy-wise, we're on 83 workers for their Zerg versus 55, but mules are an amazing thing. Mules, you know, one mule does the work of about 20 SCVs. So really, if you think about it, our Terran player is ahead on economy, thanks to the mules. Uh, this base is finally down. It's going to be turned into a planetary fortress. Uh, this base is being locked up, getting a bunker there as well, uh, preventing... Uh, Making any uh, bailing run by a little harder by having to go all the way around. Getting a... Uh, what is that? That is a turret, I believe. Why can't I click that? No, it's a sensor tower. All right. So getting a sensor tower, knowing where the attacks are going to come from. Uh, we do have... Oh, baby. We do have BC. No, that is not for BCs. I was fooled. We're having Liberator range coming. Uh, double Spire being dropped as well. Uh, plus three, plus three, care, uh, the kindness plating is also coming up. 
crackling upgrade is coming up plus one ship attack is coming up all the upgrades are now being taken by all the players uh, we are looking at a late game composition here coming soon uh, wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some ghosts potentially some broods uh, these lings will come in and just get meat grindered into the bio uh, trying to set up a flank Okay, connections, not the worst, not the best. Uh, we'll take out some of the bio. In a bit of an awkward position, kind of really hard to get that full surround where the Terran is. Uh, there is two tank support here as well. The Terran is deep on creep, though. This is where it could get really dicey for the Terran, being this deep on creep. Uh, there's a lot of creep tumors behind this. Third ba fourth base will go down. Uh... But there is a supply block here. Why is there a supply block? I'm not sure why there's a supply block. Uh, all those workers also going down, but there's a massive surround here. This all will get cleaned up. Just look at that army supply drop. Uh, bodies are hitting the floor. It's 105 to 41 army supply. Most of that army supply is Medivax. GG gets called and walk with the win. All right, game number two. Playing in the bottom left corner of Jagannatha in the green Terran pieces for E-Punk, we have Walk. Top right corner playing in the blue Terran pieces for RD, we have Mono. Okay, so Mono building... Uh, his supply depot, no uh, SCVs on the map, so no proxy shenanigans there. Uh, this definitely does look like it will be a hatch first. There we go. Drone moving over, getting ready to take that hatch. So hatch gas pool over there. There we go. Barracks being built at home. Walk Why is there no game sound? Is there? Weird. There we go. No, we do have game sound. Okay. Eighteen scout again for Mono. Uh, yeah, it is a scout. It's not a proxy. Taking advantage of those speed zones. Overlord making its way across. Pool dropped here. Gonna uh, rally the drones in as opposed to pu or pulling the drones into gas. We'll see that uh, it is, in fact, a macro opener. It's not a cheesy quick pool opener. What do we have behind it? We have a Reaper first. Four links coming out. Safety links. Uh, Reaper moving. Where is that Reaper? There it is. Moving its way across the map. Gonna kind of stand at the edge of the creep before going in. We'll uh, bruise up both links pretty badly. Gonna jump in. Try to get a kill. Guess get a kill on one of the links. That is the most damage a Reaper has done in a game of StarCraft 2 in nearly 20 years since uh, or be since Beyond really showed us how to use Reaper and got it nerfed. Any, any Zerg player worth half their weight knows how to defend uh, Reaper Harass. I'm not saying that Walk isn't worth half his weight. I'm just saying as a Zerg player, he should know how not to lose a Ling. And that is coming from a Zerg player myself. <laughs> All right, Kreef Spread coming out here, uh, establishing establishing his presence on the map. Uh, third base also coming up here, about to finish up for Walk. 1-1-1 uh, one, one opener here for our Terran player, which is kind of the standard opener, preferred opener nowadays. 
unless you're in Korea. In Korea, they do some weird stuff. Uh, this Reaper going to come in and get another kill. What is it? It's a creep tumor this time. Going to jump up here on the uh, Reaper ledge. Uh, decides not to go in. Not sure what that was about. And now two Hellions moving across the map. So two Hellion Reaper, uh, a popular push lately. Uh, two more Hellions coming up behind this, as well as a Liberator. But these two, uh, these three are going to move in anyways. They're going to try to get some uh, damage done where they can. Queen will intercept this. Second Queen will intercept this and repel them back. They're going to have to wait till they're met with the other teammates of theirs. Third base starting up here for our Terran player. Uh, Walk going to send his Overlord in and get a full scout off this main base. Sees that he's still just on 1-1-1. Uh, that is... How many is that? Six Hellions out. Two more about to pop. So it's going to be a very similar build to last time. He's going to pick that... Uh, uh, factory up. Drop a tech lab on it. Get two more barracks. We are going bioplay yet again. Still no stim. Bailing nest about to finish up here. These hellions are going to come down here. Uh, sees the creep, decides not to go onto it. This overlord will die, but we'll get confirmation of the upgrade on the tech lab. At least I think he did. Let's find out here. Yeah, saw it uh, moving. So he knows there's a. Uh, Something being researched in the tech lab. Knows this is bioplay. Gonna clear a little bit of creep. Clean up some of that uh, creep. Get back off. Wait for it to recede. Wait for the queens to come back up and relay the creep. You know, you know, you know how the cycle goes. You know how that cycle goes. Okay, third base uh, finished up here. Gonna morph into a orbital command before lifting it up over to the third base location. Getting two more barracks behind this has the double evolution. Uh, sorry, uh, engineering base for upgrades plus one plus one on its way. Gonna start pumping out double uh, medevac at a time. Uh, pretty standard uh, stuff, a probably a mirror of what we saw last game. Mono just rotating around trying to find damage where he can, but this creep bed is really good. Okay, gonna clean up a bit more creep here. Clean some creep and head back. About three tumors. And we do have a ring run by coming here on the west side of the map. It's gonna go to where uh, he suspects the third base to be, but it's actually at the triangular position instead of the linear. Our right tank production starting up here. Where is that Liberator? Liberator's here with the army. These links just kind of chilling here. Liberator now moving across the map. Liberator will get scouted by these links here. Uh, doesn't know where the third base is yet. Um, let's see here. Walk moving up to 73 workers. Getting plus one uh, melee and carapace upgrades. Uh, getting 20 more links. Getting uh, in evolution, not evolution, uh, infestation pit. Probably going to go up to hive tech relatively soon. Uh, where is that Viking? Viking is trying to find a place to go to get damage. Uh, even with the Viking, it looks like he doesn't want to go over creep. Uh, it's going to park in this uh, speed zone right under three queens. The queens don't really notice. They take a couple shots. Uh, but we have the push coming in here. We got a Hellbad Marine push with two tank support. Uh, going to clear up a lot of this creep in the middle of the map. Going to siege up the tanks. 
The tanks are actually kind of that one tank in the back is very vulnerable to a run by. Do have a run by coming here into the third base. Uh, workers are going to start to go down now. Uh, this will get cleaned up by the links, and the links are. Oh God, this uh, this worker line is going to get cleaned up here. Essentially, seventeen workers going down there. Walk doing amazing things with a handful of links and a prayer. I do like this nonstop uh, triple medevac production. Uh, how many medevacs do we have here altogether? Sorry, there's three medevacs. I lied. Double medevac production. Plus two, plus two on its way. Uh, we'll have five medevacs uh, when these next two pop. There we go. Have five medevacs already. Uh, floating his factory to where and he's building another factory at home getting two more barracks as well looks like he really wants to ramp up production he's gonna get a reactor on a factory on the low ground here so i'm assuming you might get mines Which isn't a bad switch considering you're against uh, tanks. Or sorry, against mass uh, ling. One or two good uh, mine hits will clean that up. All right, massive ling flood coming in here. We'll get the full surround on all this bio units. Now the banelings are coming. The banelings are going to come crashing in right into the workers. Uh, Boom! Nope. Nope. Boom! There we go. A shit ton of workers just going down there. Uh, this third base is ravaged. I assume we might see a GG relatively soon. 30 workers have gone down so far this game. Um, walk in amazing control here. Well, over here, there is a drop going down. Uh, a few of the workers did... 22 workers did go down on this side. But... Walk still in quite a commanding lead here. Has the bigger army supply, has the bigger economy. Uh, this will eventually get cleaned up. The base will survive. Um, yeah, the base isn't taking any more damage. A lot of links just headbutting into <laughs> Medivac Marines. Medivax will eventually run out of juice. They're going to pick up and drop now in the main base, but there is a spore here. Nowhere for them to go. They're going to have to just turn around and head back home. Got 16 Banes coming. Got uh, Kiteness Plating coming up. Have Crackling Speed coming up. We have a Spire coming up. Our, our, our Zerg player is moving up the tech tree very nicely. All right. Uh, it is, in fact, triple mine uh, production here. Uh, Drilling Claws has finished upgrading. Plus three, plus three, four. Our bio is finishing up. Um, Spire about to finish up here. A lot of those queens uh, get taken out. I believe a medevac full of... Uh, Marines also potentially went down there by the sound of that noise of Marines dying. Uh, and a beautiful surround coming up here. Uh, decent hits by the mines, but not good enough. There's just way too much Zerg units here. Uh, while that's getting cleaned up by the Zerg, this uh, there's a, another attack coming here into the third base. Um, good focus fire by uh, Mono to... Uh, knock out all those bane links. Uh, a good bunch of them did go into the factory. This fifth base again under attack. This time by two medevacs and one marine. Uh, let's see here. Will this actually go down? Will this go down? Tick tock, tick tock. And there we have it. One Marine by himself has taken down that hatchery. 
Uh, Hatchery's going to get retaken. The Marine does die in the end. Uh, F's in the chat for that Marine. Uh, may we remember his sacrifice. Another group of links coming in here. Uh, this army is also now starting to get quite Marauder heavy, but there's a crash of Banelings and Ultralisks coming in here. One Ultralisk does go down pretty quickly. Um, it's like, surprise! Mar uh, the uh, Bio army essentially does get cleaned up here. Uh, or no, the Zerg army does get cleaned up. Uh, these uh, Ultralisks will eventually go down. Um, but the army supply says it all. Uh, well, actually, it's not that far up. Actually, considering most of that army supply is medevacs, it does say a lot. Uh, gonna try and count these two ultralists, even with the marauder heavy. Um, these ultralists are doing quite a bit of work here. One ultralist finally goes down, two more ultras coming on up. There's even a queen here. Look at this queen. The queen's even getting some work done. Queen does go down. Uh, told, you know, what's kind of put in her place. Uh, the queen's supposed to be back at the base, uh, injecting creep, or injecting the hatches, building creep, healing people. Not out on the front lines fighting. Eventually, this will get cleaned up by our Zerg player, GG. Well played, gets called. Walk taking it 2-0. All right, game number one of our next series, the second last series we're casting today, playing in the top right corner in the yellow Protoss pieces, we have Gold M's Molten. Bottom left corner, playing in the blue Zerg pieces, we have, that was, that, I don't know what TAW means. I heard it earlier. I totally forgot, but it's Jedrix. So another uh, Zerk matchup, which I don't mind. I, I actually like it um, as a Zerg player. It's nice to see my fellow brethren in these tournaments. Um, most of the tournaments I cast uh, are quite Terran and Protoss heavy. So it's nice to see some Zerg representation. Oh, isn't that puppy cute? Who's a good boy? Jedrix dropping down the puppy spray just before turning into a hatch. Molten gonna come in here uh, with oh interesting pathing. Wonder if he's trying to fake a cannon rush. Oh nope, just drops the diva spray. It is Hatch Gas Pool here for our Zerg player. Uh, it looks like it's core, Nexus into core for our Protoss player. <laughs> that Diva Spray go. Not sure where the diva spray went. No, it's still there. All right. What do we have up here? Second base, about three quarters of the way done. Natural base for our Zerg player is finished up. Uh, looks like uh, Molten wants to deny this third base from going up. The Lings will come in here and be like, hey, hey, buddy, GTFO. You know, we need to build a base. And you're not helping. You're not helping at all. Um, was that a fake? Was that a fake? I think that was a fake out. Because there's no third base. There wasn't enough minerals. There's enough minerals now. Adept coming in here. Jedrix, what are you doing, my friend? What are you doing? Okay, taking third base now. Um, not sure what the purpose of that drone going out there was.
Okay, I do see some of the players in the chat. I will try not to make fun of you too hard. All right, Molten going to take a couple shots here at this uh, base. Decides it's not worth it. Go stare at the Lings. Lings are like, hey, hey, give us a kiss. And the Adept's like, ew, no, get away from me. Uh, but at the same time, the Adept shades in, right? But cancel that shade. Takes a look at how many workers are in this mineral line. Sees that it is not a Link Flood. Sees there's quite a bit of workers here. Void Ray will come out, so I totally missed that. Uh, there is Stargate tech here. Uh, Void Ray is going to come out and take out an Overlord. The Void Ray opening is quite popular in TVZ as of late. Second unit out of there is an Oracle. We have a second Oracle being queued up. Uh, that Oracle does get scouted just as it gets out of the base. There is an Overlord here. So, ooh, nope, don't want the rocks. Want this. So our Zerg player should know what's going on. What's the dealio? Robo facility being taken behind this. Another overlord sniped by this uh um void rate. This uh this cheeky little oracle will get four kills and zoom on out of there. Does scout this small group of links moving head north. Going to hit this third base location. We'll try to get a surround on these or uh, adepts. Adepts should be able to clean this up. Void race uh, support. They are repelled back. All right, looks like these oracles want to come back in here and get a few more kills. Going to jump in here. There is a spore here, but they should be able to get quite a bit done. There's, a... Oh, the queen army's coming. Uh, this should get denied right here. Three workers going down, four workers. They will get pushed out, but we do have adepts coming in here. Adepts getting a bunch of kills. The queens are actually forced to come back and deal with this. Eight workers going down, nine workers going down. Queens are trying their hardest to get these adepts to stop. Stop! No! Don't kill our babies! Uh, after 12 drones going down, uh, the queens finally clean this up, and we have a cheeky butt worm, butt hole coming. Uh, we have a nidus swarm. Uh, but where are the overlords? Where are the overlords? Does he have vision anywhere to drop? Like, if he was able to get vision here, that'd be great. Just as I say, that pylon goes down. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, he doesn't have any vision up there. So he's going to have to send uh, something. That is a lot of queens. The queens should be able to deal with uh, the air units. Let's see what units he has. He has two oracles, a void ray, two sentries, an adept, and an immortal. Uh, these units are just moving across the map. They will scout the oracles coming in. The oracles will scout them going the other way. Uh... Oracles decides to turn around. Good stasis trap catches about four of the roaches here. Uh, this, oh, that's a horrible uh, timing on the uh, night swarm. The night swarm does get scouted here. Uh, I guess this is kind of a variation on the uh, German taxi. Instead of using uh, overlords to get the queens across, you're just going to use a night swarm. Uh, baits out. I'd like to see a creep tumor get dropped here by one of the queens. But that's not going to happen. The queens are now going to put uh, a lot of pressure on this uh, on, on, on this front uh, wall here. Oh, it looks like they're going to focus down. Yep, that does go down. The Cybernex core is down. Uh, so the only units that can now get warped in are, looks like, slow zealots. Another Nidus Swarm coming in here. Uh, these zealots getting surrounded and uh, essentially picked off. Another route. No, these are not slow zealots. I lied. They are charge loss, but they are evaporating on the bodies of uh, the roaches here. Uh, the queen's dropping some clutch transfuses. The queens all have quite a bit of energy here. There is now an archon here. Another gateway looks like it's about to go down, potentially. There we go. The gateway does go down. 
Uh, no worker damage just yet either. Two queens now going down. Uh, this uh, an archon now being lost too. So a lot of expensive units being lost for our Protoss player. There we go. Creep tumors now getting dropped. What do we have producing behind this? We have two. Uh, we've got an archon that looks like coming. We have another immortal on its way. Um, although this immortal is ripe for the picking. No, it's not going to move it across. This is a full wall up. No, there is. Looks like some room here for units to get in and out. Immortals are just going to be like, no, yeah, doubt. Uh, kills one of the roaches just as it steps forward. Another push in here. Um, Biles coming down. Gets a couple of the our, uh, zealots there. Another warp in the zealots. Zealots will get around on top of the queens. The queens are now largely out of energy. The queens are starting to go down. That is a meat shield. Decent force fields will force the units to retreat back into the butthole. Uh, one roach comes here. Hey, did I miss the party? Yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, gets a uh, immortal blaster to the face and dies. Dead. Um, I believe the creep tumors have also been cleaned up here, so this should all reside. Uh, what do we have after this? We have... Uh, Molten way ahead in economy, 69 to 47 workers, uh, not good for a Zerg player. Uh, army supply in favor of Zerg. Uh, no, yes, in favor of Zerg. No, not in favor of Zerg. I cannot read clearly. Um, so after all that, uh, our Zerg player is quite far behind. We have two oracles just kind of chilling here, uh, deciding what to do. They're like, okay, we'll go to the natural... No, we'll we'll just we'll we'll just drop a thing. We're just gonna drop two reveals and get the fuck out. We're not gonna really do our job. We're not gonna try to kill a macro hatchery coming down in the main base. Um, hydralis den coming down as well as a baneling nest, plus two ground attack coming up. Getting double Stargate. Oh, baby, we're going to see air toss here. Uh, the fleet beacon is down. Are we going to see triple carriers coming on out? Yes, we do. First carriers coming out. Um, we're going to probably see a mama. Are we going to see a mama ship? Are we going to see a negative 400, 400 soon? Potentially. Um, Molten just moving up the tech path here. Uh, whereas Jedrix is still on Roach, Ling, Ravager. He is getting Hydras. Uh, oh, he has quite a bit of army in, uh, in here. He has quite a bit of army in his Nidus Warp. I don't know if he knows that. Do you have a warp in coming in here? Six workers went down, looks like, to those, uh, oracles. Let's see what the oracles have. Nine kills and five ki six kills. Fifteen kills on two oracles. Not bad. They're worth their weight. Fourth base now getting saturated up. About to finish up here. Um, starting to catch up on worker supply. Still pretty far behind. It's 65 to 73. Uh, army supply... Again, heavily in favor of our Protoss player. That is a lot of Immortals. And now we have a carrier along for the ride. Excuse me. DT Shrine being dropped. Uh, how many carriers do we have so far? We have two carriers, three more on the way. So we're going to be up to five carriers. Once you get to six carriers, that's when you get into really dangerous territory. Also have the Void Ray Speed upgrade coming up here. Uh, but no air upgrades just yet for our Protoss player. I, I really do think you need those air upgrades because um, the way those interceptors work, they just do so much damage. Uh, and uh, the fast attack rate for that really amplifies the uh, upgrades uh, that you take. All right. These two oracles look like they're going to move back across the map. Uh Gets one stasis trap, gets a revelation on them. They will get out of there. Another good stasis trap here. Uh, what do we have? Okay, plus... Oh, no, we do have plus two air weapons coming up here. 
Uh, we have now gone up to five carriers. Six one on the way. Carriers now do show themselves. Uh, Oracle's coming in. Oh no, DTs! It's DTs! It's DTs! DTs getting kills. There's no spore here. Nothing to defend. Uh, ten workers going down. DTs have uh, paid for themselves. Over here, you have uh, you have storm coming down. You have the uh, carriers doing their uh, Protoss bullshit. Twenty workers have gone down to this DT bullshit. Uh, this hatchery is going to go down. Uh, what does he have here? How does he defend this? He has he has Hydras coming out. GG gets called, and it's just too much for uh, Jedrix to take. Let's get into our next game. All right, game number two, playing the bottom left corner of Oxide in the, the gold Protoss V. So, yeah, that's gold. That's not yellow. It's gold. We have gold M's molten. Top right corner in the blue Zerg pieces. We have Jedrick with a really early fucking pool. That is a 12th pool. Um, okay, we're going to see some shenanigans here. This might be a quick game. It is going to be a gateway scout. Gateway on the low ground. Okay. Already, uh... Oh, I do like that queuing of the uh, worker back here to make it look like a cannon rush. And then going into the main base. We'll see how he reacts when he has these lings in his face. All right. Six links coming right up, right off the bat. Queen started up. Um, gonna try to block the hatch when it goes down. Moving the drone now will get denied. Links are out, so should be able to get a kill on that uh, probe. Relative, no, dude, you gotta send. There we go. Sends two pro uh, links over to make sure to deal with that. Uh, we'll drop that. Uh, We'll, we'll drop that um, hatchery. And it's just links. Just links in the production tab. We have links coming across. Does a full wall of Zealot is out. Second Zealot can't get out because it is uh, supply blocked. Finally, the uh, pylon finishes. The Zealot is now coming out. Uh, he has to make sure he doesn't get that Zealot surrounded or caught out of position. Going to nibble away at that... Uh, cybernetic score one link goes down this will probably be a hold we do have a uh, shield battery coming down here nibble 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 this uh adepts are being chronoed out at least one adept being chronoed out trying to get a surround on uh the stalkers one stalker goes down but quite a few links did go down uh gonna nibble away at this a little further about half the health left on the cybernetic core. Adept comes out. That is the end of that. Um, Natural just finishing up here. Uh, molten ahead in workers. Molten ahead in army supply. Uh, two adepts now moving across the map. Uh, what does he have in the way of army supply? He has. Two lings and a queen. Not even two queens, just one queen. Getting four more lings here. Uh, getting two queens behind this. Uh, but these adepts are going to get here before they pop. Uh, adepts going to come in here. Going to try to get a worker kill or two. We'll go into the main base. Let the bodies hit the floor. Two drones going down. Three drones. There we go. Four drones down. Five drones. Uh, six drones. This is, or no, still five drones. Gonna shade on out of there into the natural. Uh, six drones now down. Seven drones down. You're already behind in workers. This only hurts. Eight drones going down. Those two adepts definitely paid for themselves with the eight worker kills and the handful of lings. Um, work, work, uh, worker supply is about even. Um, Void Ray is now coming on out. Uh, this is... Putting uh, Jedrix kind of in a hard spot. Not going to lie. 
all Jedrix can do right now is essentially drone up. Um, I, I would say just drone up and get queens. Queens are the miracle unit. They uh, they are okay. There we go. Eight more drones coming here. Uh, they are the unit that will uh, help you hold the early game, and they're great against void rays. Okay, Oracle coming out second. The first void ray is out on the map. It looks like it's just on Overlord duty, trying to get any Overlords it can. Still droning hard behind this, up to 33 workers. Um, Oracle is out. Oracle moving across the map. Second unit out, also a Oracle. All right, Oracle going to come in here, seize the lair timing. We'll start getting worker kills, get two kills, and we'll zoom on out of there. Get another couple kills. Oh, this Oracle is doing good work. Spore just going down now. I'm not sure where the queen is. Uh, six workers going down for one Oracle. 14 workers have gone down this game so far. Uh, this probe here stopping at third base from going up. Second Oracle meets up with the first Oracle. This does get spouted, sc scouted by this uh, Overlord. We now have a Void Ray and five Adepts going to meet up with the Oracle and push in. Uh, actually, where are the Oracles? Oracles are here. So I assume this will be a multi-pronged attack. Uh, very dangerous. Uh, not safe for Zerg. Does see the Shade in. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to handle this. GG gets called with the win with the with the uh proto shenanigans all right now going into our last match all right we're gonna end the day the day we started it the way we started it with a z v z thank you everyone for sticking around i know it's a little late in the uk it's still two o'clock out here on the west coast of vancouver in canada um thank you for sticking around and watching sorry for all the technical difficulties we've had today it is a learning process uh but glad you guys are here all right game number one playing in the bottom left corner in the green zerg pieces for epunks we have walk top right corner playing in the orange zerg pieces we have mars bar if anyone in chat could tell me what TAW stands for, I'd appreciate it because I hate not being able to uh, shout out the team names or the clan names. I did hear it earlier, but my smooth brain was not able to re re uh, hold or retain that information. Because um, clearly I am a smooth brained ape sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I I'd appreciate that. Okay, both players starting hatch first. Uh, no early pool shenanigans. All right. So uh, Mars Bar is going hatch gas pool, whereas Walk is going pool no gas. Uh, this is actually a build I... No, oh, there we go. Getting the gas a little later, so it's much more of a mineral macro-oriented build. Uh, this does delay speed just the slightest, but um, it works. I, I have noticed a lot more players going for a low gas opener uh, at the pro and semi-pro level, especially in ZVZ. There we go. Uh pulls three workers in to be uh, the pool finishing up both players getting their links uh, walk just getting two uh, Mars bar getting through four Mars bar fuck I'm getting hungry now Queens being taken uh, walk seeing the timing of that hatch knows what's up knows that this is not a early pool uh, uh, BS Sending his links out onto the map. 
overlords coming in, going to settle in the position for each other's third base. Uh, Ling's running across the map, kind of avoiding each other. All right. Waxlings are getting here to the other side. There is two links waiting here as well as a baneling nest on its way. They're actually going to go and deny this third base from going up, whereas Walk's third base is up. Um, Mars Bar is going to get a full scout of Walk's base. Sees no baneling nest. Sees uh, no hatch. Full uh, Full mineral line. No shenanigans here. Walk now getting his own bailing nest a little further behind, uh, but it's coming. Both players have speed well on its way. Speed about to finish up here. And it looks like we're transitioning into, excuse me, Ling Bane phase. Um, both players just building Lings. There we go. Ling production. Um, Sneaking in a drone or two or four where you can. Uh, this overlord will not go down, but these queens are this queen might get caught out in the open. Uh, will get surrounded. Uh, walk is gonna try to save it, will not get there in time. Queen does go down. Uh, that is a little rough. Walk does see these three banes now morphing right in front of him. Will have to run back. Has banes of his own, morphing three more banes as well. Uh, gonna go and try to get a denial. Oh, uh, walk definitely took the better of that engagement. Uh, Bane's counts are reset by both players. Walk now up to three Bane's. Uh, Mars Bar sending his links back to his base. And both players just continue to build a uh, build a. Uh, Lings here. Uh, these two drones miss rallied. There we go. Kind of go back to the mineral line where they belong. Uh, Walk is droning actually behind this. Mars Bar is getting a roach warned. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I'm getting tired. Okay. Queen about to pop here. This queen should be able to uh, take out this uh, overlord. And looks like walk. No, he just has a miss rally here. It looks like. No, that doesn't make sense. It's rally to the mineral line. So he wants to take a fourth base potentially. No. All right, we have a bit of a uh, run by coming in here on two sides. Looks like these links are gonna go into the natural. And then these links here are probably gonna come into the third. Uh, links coming in here will get a kill on this queen. Uh, not many uh, drones here, so shouldn't get too much damage. A oh, beautiful Bane hit by Walk. We'll clean up most of that. Uh, it's only lost two drones so far. Um, that does get cleaned up. Beautiful Baneling hit there. Uh, does repel that push. Uh, Spine Crawler is now going down in the base in the third base. Lair about to finish up for Walk. Lair has finished up for our orange Terran player here, Mars Bar. All right. I do like how uh, Mars Bar moves his links across the map, spreads them out. Uh, kind of makes it harder to read exactly how many links are there. These links will come in here. We'll take out another queen. Uh, we'll take a couple Bane hits to the face and get cleaned up. Up here, uh, Walk's links will get repelled. It looks like by a group of roaches. Both players with really good map vision uh, from their overlords. Nicely spread out throughout the map. Uh, that drone will save itself by jumping into extractor. Roaches will come by and uh, help it out. Both players about even on army supply and workers. Uh, yeah. Uh, where are we with upgrades? Upgrade advantage right now is in favor of walk. Uh, but that is about to even up. 
Upgrades are now even. Speed just about a quarter way done for Mars Bar, whereas I believe Walk has speed finished. Uh, Overseer speed finishing up on both sides. Uh, Mars Bar is going to get a kill, not a castle, but a kill on that fourth base. Uh, his own fourth base is about to go up. Roach is coming in here, sniping a queen at the third base. Uh, looks like Walk is going to move across the map. Link's coming here. They do get cleaned up in that uh, third base location. All right, bunch of ra four Ravagers coming up here for Mars Bar. Walk deciding to not engage here, going to head back. Plus two starting up for both players. Just a, a little further ahead for uh, Mars uh, for Mars Bar. These Roaches will come by here, get a couple kills. Looks like I got one worker kill and will uh, run away. Got Lynx coming in here at this fourth base location. We'll get cleaned up. But we have Roaches coming back in here at uh, Walk's fourth base location. We'll get another Denial here. Let's see if it's a cancel or a kill. Nope. Uh, Walk's army does show up. It's like, nope, not going to happen. Does eat a couple Biles to the face. We will have enough to repel this. And Mars Bar forced to head back. Another Ling Roach run by here. Trying to get a kill on this third base. Doesn't quite get it done. Infestation pinned down now for, uh, I believe, Mars. Where is that? Yeah, for Mars Bar. Uh, Hydra Den coming up here for our green Zerg player, Walk. Where is that? There it is. Plus one carapace coming up for Mars Bar. No Hydras out just yet. Mars Bar now getting his own Hydra Den. Uh, Mars Bar coming back in here trying to deny this fourth base from going up yet again. Walk has more than enough units here to clean this up. Will force the uh, re retreat. We'll get a couple roaches. Yeah, we can just get a couple roaches on the retreat. But we do have another massive push coming. That was just a distraction. Push coming here, taking out the third base. Uh, looks like this fourth base will go down to this small hit squad of roaches. This will get cleaned up by the returning forces of maybe not Mars Bar. It's just going to move command them away. Uh, now coming in here and taking out this now fourth base. Uh, pushing... Uh, Pushing uh, Mars Bar back onto two bases. Mars Bar having to take this top left uh, 10 o'clock uh, base for his uh, third base. But this is horrible. Walk is move commanding a lot of his uh, ro uh, roaches back home. So a lot of them just died for free. Walking beside the enemy. Um, tough loss there. 24 links coming up here for... Uh, for our green Zerg player, but we do have a full surround here. This is, army will get routed. Um, good bile hit, beautiful bile hits actually on Mars Bar's army. Uh, this fourth base will go down here, gets cleaned up, uh, returning the favor, pushing Mar uh, Walk back onto two bases. Uh, now looking at smelling blood, looking to get in there into the main base, into the natural. Uh, Biles going down on both players. Uh, Walk now taking a couple Biles to the face. The boys are pulled. The boys are pulled. Um, this is kind of a last minute desperation attempt. Uh, let's see what happens. He doesn't need to pull the boys. The boys are being sent back to work. They live another day for now. Um, but Walk needs to be careful. Oh no, two, two boys continue on. Two boys die for free. Uh, trying to get a kill on that Overlord. Doesn't quite get it. Uh, 
to quote Todd, look at the supply. Like, look at that supply. It's 118 to uh, 57. Yes, they are Roaches and Ravagers, but they're both the same unit, so uh, it shouldn't really matter. Uh, Lurker Den is coming up for Mars Bar. I don't think that will be a factor in this game. Uh, Burrow is also coming up. Uh, Mars Bar or Walk has not taken a third base yet. I uh, do have some overseers here. They're going to be sent back. Uh, this base is up, but it's not being mined from. Uh, the two bases that uh, Walk took out have been retaken. They are now back up and being mined from. They are being saturated. Um, Gigi gets called and Mars Bar with the win in game number one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next game. Playing the top right corner of Jagannatha in the green Zerg pieces for E-Punks, we have Walk. Bottom left corner in the orange. Oh, what's going on here? There we go. In the orange Zerg pieces, we have Mars Bar. Uh, what do we okay? So similar opening so far from both players. No twelve pool. Looks like Mars Bar is going for that hatch first, as is uh, Walk. There we go. Hatch first for both players. I wonder if we're going to see the same uh, difference in opener uh, where one goes hatch gas pool, where the other goes hatch pool gas. Uh, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Maybe in the early Ling Bane phase. Uh, no, it looks like this time he is going hatch gas pool uh, walk. And same thing for Mars Bar. Take a look here. All right, so pool's about to finish up on both sides. Mirrored openings so far. I don't know what else to say. Gotta wait a couple more minutes. Wait till the links are out, till the jazzy jazz happens. All right, four links coming on out for Mars Bar. Walk, just the two links opting to get an extra drone early. What's going on here? There we go. Both players starting speed at the same time. Walk sending his two links across the map and getting his third base. Uh, Mars Bar's third base is already down. Two links from Mars Bar gonna come up here. We'll get repelled by this by the queen here. The queen will be here to defend. Uh, same down here. Bailing Nest is down. I do believe he did see that. Did he see that? Yes, he did see that. Walk does see the Bailing Nest. Uh, these two links get in here. Do get a full scout out. Will get cleaned up. Walk with his own bailing nest coming on down. This link will get cleaned up by the four other links of Morse Bar. All right, Morse Bar with a shit ton of links coming. He is droning behind this, but there is a lot of links. Um, It looks like uh, Mars Bar also returned the favor. Right, I said Mars Bar earlier. It was Walk walk uh, with a shit ton of links. Mars Bar now also getting a shit ton of links. Mars Bar is moving across the map. Both players with Bane to kind of... Uh, ooh. Okay, recounting the Bane counts here a little bit. Uh, Bane's coming in, trying to get a juicy hit on those uh, links. 
one bane does pop out for walk and does uh take out one of the other banes but it looks like a mars bar is gonna route he only has two links left one bane comes up here for walk uh and does force mars bar to head back home nope that's a lie mars bar gonna move back across the map Krupa links heading towards looks like the third base uh, bad connection on that one Bane. Bane only gets one link. Horrible trade. Uh, gonna try to get a cancel here. Does not get the, the cancel quite. Uh, enough Banes are here to repel this. Banes now being morphed in on the front line by... Oh, that is a... Just a lot of boom. Just a lot of boom. It looks like oh, Mars Bar came out ahead. And he is now going to flood into Walk's base. Decides to head pull back. Two Banes going in. Uh, Banes do not get connections on the workers. But these Queens are going to go down here. They do get full surrounds. Uh, is this Queen going to go down? The Queen just barely survives. Uh, but no workers have gone down yet. Evolution Chamber and Roach Warren going down for Walk. Uh, Mars Bar is just continuing to build Lings. Ling, 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 Ling. Non-stop Ling production here. He is getting his own Roach Warren too. Uh, no, that, yes, that is his own Roach Warren. A lot of Banes coming up. Eight Bane Links coming up here for, uh, for Mars Bar. Another Queen getting caught out of position. Uh, I don't know who's making what Banes anymore. I just see Banes. I see greenish explodey things coming and going. Still no workers really going down. Uh, holy shit. We have 70 uh, links dying for one and 50 for the other. We might actually see some actual drone damage here. Good pull on the workers. One Bane will get in. Lair finishing up. Will hit some of the workers but not a lot of damage just gonna bruise their egos over here it looks like this base will finally go to, we're gonna get some worker kills finally uh looks like seven workers have gone down there for walk uh the queen another queen how many queens have we lost so far why am i doing that six queens have long gone down for walk more banes coming in transfuse on the on the hatchery uh, roaches are out, but that is a lot, a lot, a lot of lings coming in here. I don't know why these lings are headbutting into that queen. That queen finally goes down. Much more drones are starting to go down. Oh my god, it's a drone massacre. The second base is going to go down. GG gets called. And Marsbar with the win. Well, that was an exciting day. Um, thank you again for all of you joining us. I will see you all tomorrow morning when the playoffs start. Um, the bracket is, I believe, now live. Uh, and hopefully all the hiccups are done for the day or for the tournament. Um, yeah, looking forward to tomorrow, seeing you guys again and uh, some more StarCraft. Give the channel a follow. Again, my name is Some Drunk Canadian. Uh, you were... Uh, it was me. I had a pleasure of casting for you guys along with Valeria and Magico. We will be here again tomorrow. So uh, have a good one. Take care.